We're talking about space management for Azure SQL Database data files and log files next on Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We have content that drops every Tuesday for our community roundtable where we discuss blogs, videos, anything that we find that is super helpful that the Azure Data community has produced uh, for the Azure Data community. And then we also have an MS Tech Bits that we drop most of the time on Mondays and also on Wednesdays. You're watching one of those right now. Okay, over to the content. We're going to start out with the documentation. We've got some really great documentation on managing file space in Azure SQL Database. More than I'm going to cover today, but I'm going to cover a good portion of it and why and why we may not want to do this. So here's the documentation. Now let's talk a little bit more about situationally why we may or may not want to shrink the database. There's a couple of key terms that I want to make sure that we have down. First off, there's max database size, and this is the overall total volume of space that we are taking up. There is the space that is allocated, the database space allocated, and this is what we have allocated to the system. Um, in the data file, we've zeroed this out. This can be utilized to be able to write new data pages to it, but it might not all be used. And then we have our data space used. This is the data where we have written physical pages to this. Um, and the storage bytes on disk, when we look at the storage bytes on disk, that is also equivalent to the data space allocated. Whenever we look at the space management, we look at potentially shrinking a file or not shrinking a file. What we need to understand is the data space that we have allocated versus the data space that we have used. We can't shrink or give up that data space used unless we actually delete data. That's a very important concept for us to understand. A lot of different things we could do. We could move it to a different Azure SQL database. That could be an archival database. Um, we could move it over to a data lake store. So it could be archival data that could be offline that we could get access to if we need it. We want to make sure we follow our regulatory and compliance guidelines with data access. Um, the log file is going to be very similar, but also a little bit different. Data files, we can have multiple data files. Uh, log files, we can only have one log file. The space management really gets into that. But I don't just want to talk about this. Let's head over to my desktop and I'll, let's show you some demos. So we're going to start out in my Azure SQL database and we're going to be utilizing the movies database. This will be the database. I, I've got a lot of different Twitter sentiment data that I collected over the years in this movie database. It's just a personal one. So the first thing we're going to do is look at sys resource stats. Really interesting DMV collected every so often on your Azure SQL database. Main thing we're looking at storage in megabytes. Uh, the database is about seven gigs in size. And so we're going to be uh, looking at the size and how we manage the size for the data file. Uh, we have to look at SysRestore stats and master. So for everything else, we're actually going to go into the movies database. I'm changing my context to the movies database right now, and we'll be utilizing that. So looking at the space allocation, I can see and confirm this at the database level as well as master. This is a script we'll be using a lot where I'm looking at sys database files and very specifically, I'm looking at, you're going to be tempted to look at sys database use, but I want you to look at allocated and available to be able to reclaim. Now, I have plenty of max file size available. I don't need to shrink this data. I'm doing this for demo purposes. So don't think this is something that you regularly need to do. But those are the two areas we're going to be looking at. So the first thing I want to do, I want to understand the indexes I have within the objects of my table. So I'm going to run sys in, uh, D DMDB index physical stats joined on sys indexes. The majority of tables I have in this database are heap. Now, a good way for me to be able to find and generate extra space would be to be able to take my top heap infinity war Twitter data, and I'm going to put a clustered index on that. And you can see I've got over 156,000 pages. This will be a nice size clustered index. Now, why is this going to create space? I've kicked this off and I'm building this, but keep in mind, I have to create a physical copy of the data. I have to allocate new IAM index allocation maps. I have to create my root level, my intermediate level pages. I'm using a very good key, small, narrow, static, ever increasing, an integer value that I called my ID. Um, that was an integer that incremented at one. So this is a great key for clustered index. I, it's 
not going to uh, cause a lot of fragmentation uh, or, or going to be very easy to fragment because I followed all the best practices with it. But when I create this, I'm going to need this extra physical copy. Then I will get rid of the space in my heap. So this is finished. So now if I run this, I can see that I have over a gig worth of space available to be reclaimed. And I can also see my database grew to over eight gig. Now, a couple things to keep in mind before we do a shrink. I'm going to do a DBCC drop clean buffer, set statistics IO on. Uh, I'm also going to include my actual execution plan, and I'm going to query 500,000 rows off of my clustered index. Now, this is going to take a couple seconds for us to be able to uh, complete, but when it does, I can go and I can take a look at my execution plan, and I can see I've got a clustered index seek. Even though it's a lot of data, it's still going to scan that. It, I'm not at a scan. I'm still at a seek. And I can see I had a read ahead read of 300, uh, sorry, 31,789 pages. This is important because we're going to look at this again after we do a shrink operation. Now, if you really need to do a shrink, the first thing I want you to consider is a truncate only shrink. Uh, the truncate only will remove all the extra white space that you have at the end of the database that is not used. It's not going to do a massive shrink, but it will do a shrink without having to reorganize any of the physical data that you have. So, the first thing I want you to try and do is to try and do a, a truncate only, and then we're going to do a shrink database. So we're going to execute the truncate only. The truncate only will run pretty quickly. I see here's the number of use pages that I have remained. Let's go back to our query, though, and let's see how much space we actually saved. Remember, we had about... Okay, so we're able to, we're, we're down to 83. I, like we saved a hundred megs, I think being able to do this. Now, again, I don't need to shrink this database, but this is just keeping in mind that you're only being and be able to reclaim that extra space, that free space using the truncate only. Now, what we're going to do now, oh, I got Spider-Man. This was my, my other database name that I was considering using. We're using movies. Let me save that. I'm going to do my DBCC shrink database for movies. Now this is going to shrink my data file. And again, one of the things that we can do is we can monitor this. We're going to use SysDM exec request. We're going to do a join on uh, sys databases. And this fantastic script is actually in the documentation that I referenced earlier. That's going to be on a link down in the comments um, and also in the description. So make sure and get it. Uh, it'll let us see what how long the shrink operation is running. Um, the shrink, it, we've got our minimum number of pages, but let's go to our query we've been using. Because what I want to see is I want to see how much space were we able to reclaim. And now we shrunk from about 8 gigs to seven, uh, 8.3 megabytes to uh, 8,300 megabytes to 7,100. So about a gig worth of space we saved. Now, the question you always have to ask yourself is, is it worth it? Uh, typically, when you're going to be doing this, you are got a database that's at a 2 terabyte or 4 terabyte size. So this is a much smaller table, much smaller database. But let's just see if we turn on our actual execution plan, run the same query, how do things run? Well, first off, from an execution plan perspective, we're still going to get a clustered index seek. That's not going to change at all. But one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that when it comes to the number of reads that we're going to have, our physical reads stayed the same. They could change, but our read ahead reads are 31,825. And if you'll remember from before, let me paste up the previous, I, I saved this off in a notepad. Uh, the previous ones, we had 31,789. So that's a hundred extra read ahead operations almost that we had to do. If I'm running this query 10 times a second, 30 times a second, that, that's a lot of overhead. If I'm running it once a day, not a big deal. But it's important to understand that by reorganizing that data via that shrink operation, we probably need to look at the fragmentation of our indexes. We might need to do some type of index maintenance associated with it. We need to make sure that we're taking care of our indexes, that we've got everything in the physical order that we need it to be in so we can still get the performance we expect. Okay, so We've done our shrink of our data, and that was that would be how you manage it. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that Azure SQL Database is constantly shrinking the log file for you. Uh, we grow at a 64 megabyte increment. Keep that in mind that thanks to SQL uh, Server 2022, that's a zero out type of thing. Um, 
So when I look at this, one quick check, right? This is what our shrink has given us. This is the amount of space that our log file is, but rebuilding an index is a fully logged operation. So if I want to do a shrink file, shrink file two, truncate only, that's going to be for the log file. This is how I could forcefully reclaim space for the transaction log. Typically, you should not need to do this. And as you can see, we were able to reclaim about a gigabyte's worth of space to reduce the space used for the transaction log. But typically, you don't have to do it. Now, looking over what we actually did and what we covered, uh, we started out with our baseline, with our data and our log. We built a clustered index and we saw the physical growth. Um, and then we did a truncate only. And it was very, very small, the amount of space we were able to reclaim. Uh, doing a full truncate, we were able to gain more space. And then after the shrink, we were able to get the most space back and shrink our log and the data file. So we reclaimed all that space. So what did we cover today? Well, we covered a lot. We talked about how to manage Azure SQL databases, data files, and log files. Again, typically what you wouldn't want to do is you wouldn't want to shrink them. You absolutely don't want to do auto shrink. Auto shrink is something you can turn on, but uh, one of the things I'll say is it's constantly shrinking the database. That would be constantly shrinking uh, and fragmenting your database. It, I wouldn't recommend that for 99% of all databases. That's not going to be something that you want to do. When we talk about space management in Azure SQL database, you might need to shrink a database in order to be able to make sure that you're able to make it underneath the cap of four terabytes, which is the current physical limit. You could always go up to a hyperscale database, which has up to 100 terabytes of available space. Or as we talked about earlier, you could offload some of that data and you could put it into an Azure Blob storage account using Azure Data Factory. And if you ever need to read it, you could utilize either Polybase within a serverless SQL pool uh, in Synapse, or you could do that in a managed instance. There's so many different ways we could architect our way around that. All right, you know where we like to keep this going, in the comments. So if you have any thoughts, any questions, anything you'd like to see, please sound off below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us over at Tales from the Field. Hope you have a great week. Take care, everybody. Yo, I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, y'all. Sometimes I'm high.